Well, I've uh, had kidney disease for about 20 years. Um, and it started out as a kind of a simple problem. I'd go to the doctor and they'd check your creatinine. Uh, that's uh, that stuff that your kidney is supposed to, uh, it's waste and it's supposed to take care of. Well, if that number gets too high, uh, you can get kidney disease. So the doctor said, well, you're kind of on the high side of normal. I don't think he was talking about my personality at that point. Um, my kidney, and they said, we'll watch it. Great. So for well, close to 20 years, Lord. I'd go to those, that doctor and say the same thing when I'd do my annual physical, or I'd go to a new doctor, we'd move or whatever, and he'd say the same thing, kind of on the high side of normal. Well, six or seven years, I got to tell you this, I, I'm going to sound winded. It's okay. I, I'm fine. Um, it's part of the recuperation process. So if I grab a breath here and there, don't worry about it. Anyway, so um, when we moved to Indianapolis area six or seven years ago, I got a new doctor, a family doctor, and he started looking at my numbers and he said, you know, those numbers are going in the wrong direction. And I said, okay, uh, what do you suggest? And he said, well, we're going to watch it, but uh, I think you're going to need to see a, a nephrologist. Now, do you know what a nephrologist is? It's a doctor who looks at your nephs. No. <laughs> It's a kidney doctor, okay? I didn't know that word either. I had to look it up. Um, but I went to, the, to him and he said, you know, uh, this is going to be a serious thing if this just continues the way it's going. I said, so what do I do? He said, well, let's for a little while work on your diet. Uh, I did not know this, but salt is a big part of kidney disease. If you have too much salt, that just makes it worse. So I said to the doctor, I said, so it sounds like I need to watch where I go to eat. And he says, oh, yeah. I said, well, which restaurants, you know, what kind of restaurants should I avoid? And he goes, uh, let's see, um, Oriental, Italian, French, Peruvian. I said, basically, don't go out to eat. <laughs> he said, well, you're just going to have to watch it, because I did not realize there was salt in so many things. And he said, said to me, you're going to need to have 2,000 milligrams a day at most. Okay, that didn't sound too terrible. Still, I started looking things up. And so I'm going to do a little public service announcement for, for you right now. Uh, you're not going to like it, but here we go. Um, Panera Bistro French Onion Bowl, 2,260 milligrams, one thing. Or maybe you like Applebee's Crunchy Onion Rings. Who doesn't like onion rings, right? Um, 3,600 milligrams. Or Pizza Hut pepperoni large. No, this isn't the whole pizza. This is one slice, 820 milligrams. Anybody going to change their lunch plans? To, you don't know. You don't need to do what I did. Be smart, and I'll talk more about that. Because there were other things I had to think about. It wasn't just salt. He said potassium. I, I love bananas. Potassium, you know. Um, phosphorus. Uh, you can't overdo protein when you have kidney problems. So I had to do all that for a couple of years. We kind of kept it moderated, but it was still going in the wrong direction. Uh, finally, uh, my nephrologist said, guess what? You've graduated to stage four. Well, some of you medical people know that there's only one more stage, dialysis. And that's a serious thing. So... Um, I said, well, I don't, don't I get like a, a toaster or a blender or something for reaching that? Now he says, no, what you get is you need to worry about dialysis. So we started doing that. He said, at that point, I think you ought to try to get a kidney transplant um, before you get to that point. It's a lot healthier. I won't go into all those details. So we started a process. We began to pray and say, Lord, wow, what, what all is this going to involve? So we began a search. And within a few days, we had a volunteer, our son, Tim. Some of you know of him. You've watched him on TV, he, although he doesn't do that show anymore. He does University of Illinois men's basketball and, of course, the Bears and the Bulls. And we, we see him on television more than we see him in person. But I tell you, you want to bring tears to a dad's eyes. Have your son or daughter say, I'll do that. I went, wow, 
Wow, you know, with all the things it has to do and how complicated life is. So we both began testing. And that's a long process. I had to be tested, of course, to see. We really have to see if there's a match, not just blood type, but uh, you know, room for the kidney to go. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, so one time, I remember it was separate, but he went to his, you know, he was doing it totally separate from me. But we talked later, and he said, did you have that test where they, you know, they draw your blood, and did they take 15 vials of blood that day? I said, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sitting there, and she's, there's 15 of these things. I said, did you leave me enough to get home? <laughs> she, she laughed and said, yeah. Well, it went great. Um, Tim's test was per, you know, just perfect, ever, a match, every little step until the last one. The last one was about high blood pressure. And you know, he doesn't have super high blood pressure, but for his age, he did. And they said, we're not leaving you with one kidney. No way, because that can lead to kidney disease. So we were pretty discouraged, you know, and he was discouraged. I, I appreciated his sadness over that. I think he really wanted to help dad, and uh, I was excited that he was willing to help. Maybe you feel that way. You feel kind of discouraged, though. You go, well, is this it? I, I mean, are we out of ideas? Is this going to work out? And um, if you're feeling that way, I want you to know you're not alone. It happens. And we don't always get what we want right away. Um, I didn't know if I was going to get that kidney at all. Um, but God, pastor said, I appreciate it. God is still good. I hear this, I've said it, so I'm not blaming anybody, but people will say after something really special happens, what do they say? Oh, God is so good, and he is. But do you, do, do you hear the implication behind that when people just say that about good stuff, but when it's going bad, do they always say, well, I know you're in a car accident, but God's good. That's probably not what you want to hear right then, but God is still good. And I, 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 you're going to get more of that in, in a minute. God is good all the time, even in the middle of tragedy or when we don't get our preference, like that kidney right then. Psalm 107, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. He's not just good when it goes our way. And we need to hang on to that. I hope you will, and maybe apply it to something uh, you're going through. I, I love the word at Christmas time, Emmanuel. We should use it all year, <laughs> but typically we save it for Christmas. But because what does Emmanuel mean? God with us. So he never leaves us or forsakes us, even in the middle of our tough things that we're going through. Psalm 37, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they'll never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. God with us. Or Proverbs 16, 9. We can make our plans. We sure will try to make some, but the Lord determines the steps. But it's still God with us. If you remember anything today, don't remember much about my story. Just remember this. God is with you say it about you. God is with me. If I'm a Christ follower, if I'm in the kingdom of God, then he's there. It doesn't matter where I go, what time of day or night it is. So back to the story. So we were disappointed, and uh, Tim was, was as well, but we had to go on to plan B. There was just one problem. We didn't have plan B. <laughs> there was no one else in line. Uh, there was no one else saying, well, I'll be a donor. You know, we're thinking... Um, what are we going to do? Until uh, we go to what's called Connection Point Church uh, in Brownsburg. Well, actually, they have another site in Avon where we go. Uh, Brownsburg is just a little startup church of about 4,500 people. <laughs> um, but uh, the kind of the chief of staff woman there uh, also kind of supervises our little church in Avon. So we would run across with her, and she knew about my kidney needs. And so she said, can I put that out on uh, our social media? And I said, what social media? No, I, I, I said, sure. And uh, she also, she puts it out there. And um, by chance, um, there was someone who heard about that from social media. And I want you to 
see a woman named Annette Brown. Now, Annette and her husband, Pete, um, go to Ben Davis Christian Church, which is where we went for a couple of years. Our daughter and her husband and their four boys go there. So we ran across them. We knew them a bit. I played in, I'm a keys player, and I played with Pete. Uh, he's a great bass player in the worship team there a few times. I'd speak there maybe once a month. It was a great experience. But then we went back to Connection Point out because we, we moved and we wanted to be closer. Um, but Annette just happened, oh, just happened, to see that online, and she uh, said, I'm going to do that because, well, I know him. But there was a bigger reason. Um, her mom, years ago, uh, got a kidney donated to her mom, extended her life, made her life way better, and she said, someday, I'm going to give that kidney back. And so there was her opportunity. And so um, we called Annette. We, did, we hadn't heard anything. But um, she said, oh, my last test, everything's gone smoothly. And it turned out I was near my last test because I was still going through that. I needed to do it either way. And um, we started to believe, again, Jeremiah 32, 17. O oh, sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and earth by your strong hand and your powerful arm. Nothing's too hard for you. We didn't have plan B, but nothing is too hard for our God. And we started our search for a kidney donor in March of 2022. I had my surgery December 14th. That's impossible. You talk to anybody going through it. If you're going to get on a list, it's three to five years. And at that point, I might not have been healthy enough for surgery. Now... Would God have been good if he didn't do that? Yes, but he's great. That's my point. We have a great God. We had it at um, University Hospital in Indianapolis. Our surgeon was Dr. William Goggins. You've probably never heard of him. But in 2018, he did his 2,000th kidney transplant. We had one of the best in the country. I mean, of all surgeons right now, he's probably done the most. And... Uh, that was God. God, nothing is impossible. I never did dialysis. I didn't have to wait three to five years for a donor. I had one of the premier surgeons in the country. Annette did great. Uh, she's doing really great now. Um, in fact, they took her right kidney and put it, it's right here, folks, on my right-hand side. Do you want to see my scar? No, I'm not showing you. It's eight and a half inches long if you're interested. But she's funny. She calls it, she says, how's righty doing? And I said, hi, oh, it's great. But, you know, I was so thankful to get her right kidney because that would be the conservative one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was only there for two days, uh, a little less complicated, but still very serious surgery. I was there for five days. And I want to tell you, it was painful. I think it included waterboarding. I'm not sure of that, but I think it might have. Um, wow, uh, we both made it. Some of you are probably wondering, uh, this is a little fun fact for you. Some of you are probably wondering, well, what's it like to have someone else's kidney working in you? And I said, yeah, it's really kind of weird um, that I have this other part. But here's an interesting fun fact. Before I got my kidney, I hated lima beans. I hated them. But after my kidney, I still hate them. <laughs> Getting a new kidney, not going to change that, I'll just tell you. <laughs> I actually wrote a blog um, pretty much every day from a few weeks before till a couple months afterwards. If you'd like to read, it's meant to be fun, but it also tells you kind of what I went through. Just go to neverquitclimbing.com slash blog, and there's a link right there. And you can read all or part of it. It's just, I hope you get some laughs, but maybe learn something, too. But that's what I want to share with you today is what, what did I learn? What could you learn? Uh, my story is just one of many. It's, it's not as bad as many people's stories, so I'm not trying to get sympathy here. Um, it's, I just 
I learned some things. It was, you know, I didn't want to have three months up till now, and it'll be longer than that of just having to slow down a little bit, but God's redeemed it, and I want to tell you a little bit about that. First of all, God can do anything. That's no surprise. We've talked about that already. But see, we, we don't always know how he will do something or whether he'll do it our way, but the impossible doesn't bother him. Mark chapter 10 Jesus looked at his disciples and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. So I just want to say, what are you wondering about right now? You don't have to share it, but are you saying, yeah, this feels impossible. It might be a job, or it might be family, it might be illness, it might be uh, finances. I don't know. But God can handle it. Don't give up on him. Don't demand your own way. Just say, God, I'm opening my hands because I believe you're good, so I'll trust you to do what's good. It may not be comfortable. Hang on to this Mark 10 verse. With God, all things are possible. Secondly, and this is really important, um, God doesn't always perform a miracle just for us or on our timetable. Now, do I believe God does miracles? You bet. There's one right here sitting. She had a miracle, in a sense, to going through her cancer, how God just brought her. She's still with us, you know. That's miraculous. Um, but see, sometimes God doesn't give us our miracle. I believe he could have healed me 20 years ago. Just said, hey, you need a better kidney. Great. I believe with all my heart he could have done that. But I believe he didn't do it because there were some other miracles <laughs> that were going to take place that would have as much influence, if not more, about the greatness of God. Um, people like to claim miracles. And my problem with that is they often claim it, I, I'm going to claim that for you this week. Okay, God could do it this week. But to say it has to happen for it to be you know, God's will? No. Because sometimes he's got another miracle to do down the road. Um, the gal's picture, who you saw a minute ago, Annette. That's a miracle how that came together. That wouldn't have happened if God would have healed me before. If he would have done that, boy, it would have saved me a lot of pain. Um, but what I also haven't told you about is um, this. It's got Brownsburg. That's where, this, where we live in um, the uh, Indy area. There's another one that says Avon on the front. And there's a magazine group that puts these out every month. Four color, really, really nice, nicely done. And um, I probably can't see it, but an article all about what happened. Um, the, the editor is a believer, it's a Christian. So I've got, I got to know him a few years ago when he did an article on Never Quit Climbing, our book. And uh, so he said, I, I call him on a Friday. I said, we both live in Brownsburg. Um, I didn't call him. I emailed him. I hadn't heard, didn't hear anything. It was Friday. Monday, he gets back with me and says, oh, we're doing that. That's going to be in Brownsburg magazine. And I went, thank you. And he says, oh, I want you to write the article from your perspective and I, he, I knew I could write anything I want. I could write about God. I could write about God's provision. I could write about a miracle. I could write the whole thing. And so there are hundreds, thousands of these floating around northwest Indianapolis with our story in it. I don't care that it was me who wrote it. I, what I care about is God has redeemed this. That's another miracle. Galatians 6, 9. I love this. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It's all about the proper time. See, I think I've got the proper time. I thought, yeah, God, 10 years ago, that would have been the proper time for me. Well, the God's proper time, because he said, I got better miracles to do yet before we're going to do this one. Thirdly, we learned this. God works within our challenges not merely to overcome our challenges. Sometimes his work is going on behind the scenes that we don't see. See, I was in the hospital for five days, as I said. I'll never forget 
what I call my 18 inches of pain. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, what that was is that, you know, I got this scar here, it's surgery, and so I'm in a hospital, and of course they'd come in the night and they'd say, oh, we want to get you up. And I'd go, oh man, please. Because the 18 inches of pain was from being seated to standing up, or from standing up to being seated. I mean, it was so, so awful. I said to Jackie, I said, because she had two cesarean sections with our kids, I said, if this was anything like having a baby, we're not having any more kids. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, but you see, while I was in the middle of that pain for five days in the hospital, um, God gave me some dominoes. Now, I know not all of you were here back some years ago when I talked about dominoes, but I still keep one of these with me because God keeps putting dominoes in my life. Remember, the domino is the first one in the display that you just have to knock over and then it goes to these. Some of these people put up 10,000 dominoes. I mean, do you have a life? Anyways, <laughs> but, but it's kind of cool. And, but I always, in every audience, I say, when you, when you see one of those, how do they start the display? Everybody knows, even the kids know. We knock over the first one, right? So in the hospital, in the middle of that pain, um, I, I realized God was giving me some dominoes. Many of them were nurses. Um, there, there's a nurse who came in two of the nights that I was there, and uh, separated by a couple of nights. But she was a talker, and I wasn't sleeping real great. Middle of the night, you know, I had this tube in my neck, but they could draw blood and all that stuff. But it was great. I was glad for that, but they'd always come in, and I'd usually be awake. So she loved to talk, and so the first night she said, what do, what do you do, you know, when you're not here? And I said, so I told her I'm working part-time, and I did some uh, coaching, and I did some writing. I said, I wrote this book called Never Quit Climbing. She said, oh, wow, what's it about? And I told her the story, and a lot about Jackie's uh, story and how God worked through all of that. And she said, I'd love to read that. I said, well, you'll have one here and I said, I'll sign it for you. You can sell it on eBay for an extra two bucks if I sign it, uh, my standard line. And she said, oh, that would be so great. And I um, and, and, uh, gave her a wristband that says the same, never quit climbing on it. She was so thrilled. So I brought it back the, the next, next time. And the one night, that second night, we're there, and I told her about my grandson, my oldest grandson in Indy, who loves magic. He's 13. And... Um, so he's taught me some card tricks, and I, he does way more than I do. But I told her, I just, I said, I kind of do the card trick thing. She said, oh, could you show me one of these card tricks? So this was the first time, and the second time she said to me, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. She'd always come in at 4 a.m. And she said, you haven't shown me that card trick yet. I went, okay, grab, I, I had a deck of cards I always bring with me, and I said, grab that deck over there. So get the deck out. I'm starting to show her this card trick. And another nurse walks in. And the other nurse looks at us and goes, are you playing cards? <laughs> it's 4 a.m. I said, well, yeah, we, well, sort of. Anyways, that gal heard about Jesus. Because in my book, I talk about what it means to know God and to be able to keep going and all those kind of things. I don't know if I'll ever see her again. I'm going to try to get her one of these magazines just to read to hear the whole story. But nurses were that way. My surgeon, again, I don't think he's a believer, but the nicest guy, he's brilliant, one of the best in the country. When he heard my story, he said, you have a donor, right? And I told him the story, and he said, you know? And he, he, all of a sudden, he got really serious. He said, somebody up there is looking out for you. I said, oh, yeah. And on December 14th, he's going to be looking out with, for you, too. See, I, God, I, I would not want to have missed that. And um, so um, it's, it's worth it. It's not easy. But sometimes we just have to say, God, if you want to work in the middle of my pain, then go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm willing. Let's go. I got my hands open. Well, fourthly, I learned that real living involves giving. 
If, if we're not giving, we're, we're going to miss out on life. If it's all about taking for us. Annette, my donor, she's one of the humblest people I've ever met. If you've got an idea, tell me. But I don't know how to thank her enough. I don't. I mean, I hug her, I thank her. Um, we had our pictures taken together, you know, just to have a memory of it. What do you say? What do you say? The only thing I can hang on to is that she's willing to be a giver, not a taker. She said, I don't want to be an icon. I, I don't think it was even about me at all. I think it was, I just want to do this. I love Jesus. I want to give back. That's what this is about. And she did it. She couldn't be happier. She got to do something that matters. And I think what I want to encourage you to do is every day look for opportunities to serve other people, to give, even in small little ways. You don't have to give a kidney, <laughs> you know, if you want, feel free. But it might be your time. It might be your attention. It might just be um, the smallest of things. Jesus paid the price. We know that for us. He did something really big, died on the cross, rose again so that we could know the Father. However, we can miss this little verse. It's in Acts chapter 10. And Jesus went around doing good. Really? It doesn't say he went around doing really big, spectacular stuff. No, sometimes what did he do? He stopped and talked to a woman who other people weren't going to talk to. He had time on the road. We don't know what he did in the times where he walked from place to place. We can do the same. Look for those. I'll call them dominoes. You don't have to call them that. 1 Timothy 2.6 says, Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given, oh, where? What's this phrase? At the proper time. At the proper time. I don't try to make dominoes happen. They just do. Um, I went into the, um, I have to get my blood checked every week. Thankfully, I can get it done near my home. Don't have to go to downtown all the time. I walk in one morning, 6 a.m. I try to get in there early because then there's not a big crowd. So I go in, this gal, I sit down and she says, I'm a little scattered this morning. I went, really? She says, yeah, um, I'll, I'll get it together. She said, my daughter called me and her boyfriend died. I went, Wow. I mean, my first reaction is, do I look like a pastor? <laughs> I guess. It's okay. She told me about that, and so what do you say? I, I said, look, I'm going to pray for you. And I, knew, I figured I'd probably see her again. I gave her one of these little blue bracelets. I said, maybe your daughter would be encouraged by that. I, I said, I know it's not much, but uh, she said, oh, no, thanks. That'd be great. I'll give it to her. So I took my blood and I went off, and it was a couple weeks later that uh, I walk into the place, and of course, I just met her once, and she had just met me once, and so she's taking my blood, she does all that, and then she looks down at my wrist, and she goes, oh, you're the person who gave me that, and I said, yeah, you're the nurse, oh yeah, wait, wait. how is your daughter? She said, well, she's making progress, but she never takes that off. She loves having it. It wasn't much. It wasn't much. So I gave her the one. I said, well, here, you need to have a matching one or something like that. By chance, I got her again in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah, by chance? Sure. And she said, when I walked in, she said, I'm wearing this bracelet. We've had a chance to talk about God, and um, she has talked about reading her Bible. I, I mean, I didn't make that. It just happened. Um, the other, Jackie and I were at a retreat, a personal retreat that we do for our ministry. They want us to spend time with the Lord every month, which is a great idea. So we went to this place we've been before, as a retreat place. So it's real quiet. You know, you're not supposed to talk to people too much. It's supposed to be between you and the Lord. But a um, little eating area downstairs. And so that night, we'd seen this, this one other gal there, and uh, that night went down to make popcorn. That was all that was on my agenda. I'm taking this bag of popcorn and putting it in the microwave. Jackie went down there with me. So the one gal who we'd already met, uh, she was probably in her 40s or so, mature Christian, 
But we talked a little bit. She was there. She popped in. We hadn't seen the other gal. She's in her 20s. She comes in, and so I like to have a conversation. So she told me that she managed one of these, uh, what's the truck stop name? Um, what? Loves. Loves, yeah. And she said she manages one of those. And I said, well, tell me this. What's the toughest thing about that job? She says, keeping my faith. I said, yeah, probably a rough crowd. <laughs> she said, yeah. She said, I'm a brand new Christian. Well, that night and the next morning, we got to just share with her a couple of simple things about how to grow in your faith. I went to make popcorn, folks. I wasn't looking. I wasn't demanding. I wasn't saying, okay, God, let's have another spiritual moment. It was all God. Why? Because Jesus went around doing good. Paul said, I live by, my, by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Why would we not do the same? 1 Peter 2, for you have been called for this purpose because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you will follow in his steps. I don't like to suffer. I don't like 18 inches of pain. <laughs> really, trust me. I'm going to be on medication the rest of my life. That's kind of a drag. But you know what? God is getting me in the door. In fact, guess who's going to get one of these magazines? Every one of my medical people downtown. I got that opportunity. I've got this moment. God gave it to me. I didn't make it happen. And he'll do the same for you. See, what are you willing to give? My hunch is, I've prayed this all this week, and I don't know if, I hope others have, that all of you who are here would be getting some nudges already about giving. Totally unaware of my situation. And I'm praying that right now. That you'll say, God's been nudging me to give, maybe it's a meal to my next door neighbor. Maybe it's uh, some time with this person. Uh, some finance. I don't know. But I want to tell you, it's worth it. It's worth it, even if it's not what we planned. I was watching a TV show um, a few years ago, and um, I'll never forget that the, the people, the medical people, were looking forward to a vacation because they'd been through COVID. And you know, every, we know how hard so many of them worked, maybe many of you. And uh, so they, they were getting ready for a long weekend, this husband and wife, resident and his wife, and uh, an, an earthquake hits the city on like Thursday or Friday. And, they're, and so everybody's called in, all the surgeons, all the docs, anybody who can serve, come into the hospital. So they all go in, and all day long they work on um, the people. They help save lives. They, some pass away, but they're there to serve. And they're just exhausted. They were thinking they were going to have the whole weekend off. And I'll never forget what the nurse said to her husband when they're at home that night, exhausted, just trying to catch their breath. Oh, I love this phrase. She said, you know, honey, today wasn't the kind of day we hoped for, but it's the kind of day we live for. Wow. <laughs> Life's not always going to turn out the way we want, but if we'll take God's perspective, if we'll say, Lord, um, I trust you, uh, even though this is hard, give me a way to serve, redeem this for good, then let's go. Because that's what I live for. That's what I live for. I thought about that that night at the little retreat center. I, we headed up to bed, and I, and I said, <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we're supposed to do. And God gave us that. And it can be anywhere. But we've got to say, Lord, I tr well, let me give you five things you can trust, or four things. You can trust him just to have good in mind. You can count on him to come through. You will get blessed, I guarantee it, more by giving than getting. And he's got a plan for you, yeah, even in your struggles, even in a kidney transplant. 
even when life's not going well, even when your kids are a mess, when we can go down a long list. But are you willing to give? And when you say, God, I, I do trust you. Take a first step today. I hope you'll talk about it maybe on the way home. Or we're going to have a closing song in just a minute. Maybe you want to stand. Maybe you, you don't have to do any of that. But whatever would convince you that, Lord, I'm open. Um, Lord, I believe you're good, no matter whether it's a comfortable thing or not. Lord, I need the impossible to happen. We did. Then trust him. Just say, Lord, I'm, I'm opening my hands to that. This scares me a bunch, but I'm opening my hands to that. He will meet your need. He will do what is best on his timetable, not ours. So we've got to trust him. Put ourselves, our family, our concerns, whatever it is, into his hands. And then say, oh, Lord, this is what, this, I want my purpose to be more about this. Yeah, you have to do everyday things. We all do. But to say, Lord, I want my purpose to be bigger than just getting through the next day. See, I can't wait. I say this every time, but I love this church. I love your pastor, Cheryl, and Austin, the whole family. Um, but many of you, um, it's been so um, great to be. So I, I would look forward to coming here because I know you're not just going to walk away. I, I, I know that. But I'm not going to try to make it happen. I just want to remind you that God is bigger than any challenge you can face. Um, so I'm going to pray. And um, then we're going to sing a great song about the goodness of God. But I want to give you a, one more little fun thing. Um, I, I don't have a new book out. I will next time. It's almost done. Guess what it's called? Finding Dominoes. Changing your world one encounter at a time. It's almost done. We'll, we'll have it for next time. But... Um, I did bring a couple of the past books, not so much to sell. If you want, we can do that. But I'm going to give away two books, okay, um, to any of you who still have your domino. And usually when I come here, there's somebody who says, I still got my domino, all right? So if you do, you come see me. But then I'm going to give away uh, some of these uh, wristbands, and I'm going to give away a domino if you'd like to have one. However... There's a quiz, okay? For the wristband, and only one per family, you have to come up and tell me which side of me is the kidney on. Don't, don't, don't cheat, don't tell, don't tell, okay? You have to remember that. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the second one is I'll give a domino away to the first 10 people, about and first people who can remember <clears throat> what food I don't like. That's after, after we're all done. Okay, so let me pray, and then we're going to sing this great song. And you respond the way God leads you to. God, I so thank you for um, the fact that you do the impossible, even when we don't know how. We don't know how you're going to do it. But I know you do. And, uh, Lord, I know that you also have called us to... Um, to serve others, to give. And um, so if giving right now seems impossible and those two come together, then Lord, would you help us open our hands? Some of us are facing things that are so big. We don't know what's going to happen, but Lord, may today we have a new sense of your goodness as well as your greatness. Uh, do things that uh, our family will see, do things that our neighbors will see, um, Lord, may we just, uh, in the next day, weeks, months, what a great God we have. And may we trust you like never before. May things be resolved because we put them into your hands and take them out of ours. So, Lord, I'm not going to make anything happen here, but would you have freedom and people who um, want to do business with you and want to trust you and want to open their hands to you, may they realize that we really do have a good God. And we'll thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 You know, I think of that, um, his message. How many have found that you can look back sometimes and you can see more than you could ever see ahead or even right where you're at? I've been so many times in a place where it wasn't comfortable getting to that place. 
And it was terrible sometimes getting to that place. But like Gary said, I served a God that knew everything that needed to be done in between where I was and where he was, he was taking me. And he wasn't taking me where I was going to go for me. Maybe a little bit. But for the most part, he was taking it for so many others. Like that magazine, Gary, it's, it's, it's out there. The word is being spread. God will take the little that we have, and he'll multiply it a billion times over, and God never stops multiplying it. But we have to take the first step to believe him that no matter what we're going through, even when everything looks like God is not a good God, God is always a good God. Good times, thank you, Jesus, or bad times, Lord Jesus, you're still good. Could we stand to our feet and sing this song together and realize how good a God we serve today? You, Lord, oh, your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hand. Father, when we leave this place today, help us to be refreshed in our mind and our spirit 
to realize that you're working things out ahead of us. Even before we get there, you're there. You're waiting on everything to fall into place. Give us the faith, the patience, and the trust to keep leaning on you. We trust you, we love you, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.